Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. You're here today for basement bar ideas, liquor bottle storage in particular. Now, I'm going to be producing this as a three-part series. It's going to be really, really fun because I'm going to be taking you through the entire space and showing you how I solve some problems with the existing area. One of the great things that I'm going to also be doing with this video series, I'm teaming up with two great companies. The first one is called Lamps Plus. Now, Lamps Plus is supplying all the lighting for this space. The other company that I'm partnering with is called Crown Granite. Now they're located in Metro Detroit in Farmington Hills, Michigan, and they're supplying all the ready to assemble cabinetry for this space. Really beautiful stuff, wonderful quality, and I'll get into both of those as I go through the space and show you exactly how I'm using both products. This feature wall is going to be turned into liquor bottle storage by adding some floating shelves. I currently have a sh very shallow granite shelf here that really isn't doing much in terms of storage. And speaking of storage, I have very shallow cabinets. So they're only 12 inches deep. I really want to set this up as a buffet line whenever I have larger parties. So I'm putting in 24 inch deep cabinetry instead of the cabinets that are here. But I'm not getting rid of these because I'll be relocating these in a different area of my basement. Now you've seen me install floating shelves before, but in this case I'm doing something really creative with the lighting. So I'm going to highlight the liquor bottles and I'm also going to increase the lighting in this space as well by installing a fixture in the ceiling above it. So let's take this mirror down and I'll show you what I'm hiding behind it. Well, I was hiding an arch behind that mirror. One of my biggest problems and most people's problems in a basement area is lighting. And so in my case, I was really hoping that I could pull some of that sunlight over to this side of the basement simply by hanging a mirror. I mean, it was worth a try. And one of the things that it led me to is realizing that I needed new lighting in this space. It's going to be energy efficient so I can leave this on for long periods of time and actually not have it cost a whole lot to run it. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and frame in this area. Well, it's day two, and while I have the joint compound drying on the wall, I'm going to go ahead and start dismantling this cabinet area. So what I need to do is just take a good old fashioned utility knife here, make sure that I'm being really careful because I need to cut off the silicone that the installers placed underneath this granite slab to keep it in place. It's really easy to get through, believe it or not, so uh, this is going to be a very quick job. Demolition is complete and I'm almost at the point where you would be if you were starting out with a plain wall. So what I've done in the meantime is I've taken and located the shelves that I'm going to build. Now I know the shelves are going to be four and seven eighths inches tall and what I've done is I've taken some craft paper, cut strips and actually tape them up on the wall exactly where I'd like to locate these so I can stand back and look at it and see if it looks good to me and that way I can actually adjust the shelves up or down depending on where I'd like them. And I've also measured my bottles just to make sure that I have enough clearance in between each shelf for our bottles. So I have short bottles going on the bottom, I have medium sized bottles going in the middle, and then larger bottles on the top. Now the interesting thing about this is, is that I'm also going to be lighting these from the bottom up. So I'm not going to be able to do this with the granite shelf. Lighting up the bottles on the granite shelf, I'm going to use a light fixture in the ceiling. It's going to be a track light, it's going to be beautiful, and it's going to be adjustable completely so that I can focus the light wherever I'd like it. The shelving units are actually going to have a strip of light facing up so that actually the bottles that are placed on top of them are going to glow a little bit. And the way that I'm going to do this is with an LED strip light. Now these are really cool. They're super thin. You can cut them with a pair of scissors and you can see they're only about a quarter of an inch wide. But the thing is, is they need to be plugged into an outlet. So I don't have outlets in this area yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate them on one end of the shelf. So really nobody's going to see it. But I have a nice remote control that's going to operate 
separate the lights and I'll be able to do it from the side every single time. So what I need to do is put some remodel boxes in the ends here of each shelf that I'm going to be placing here. So fortunately I already have electricity located in this wall. I have a switch that operates the lights above me which I'm going to tap into for the ceiling fixture and then I have an outlet here. I'm going to run the electricity that's going to control the shelf lighting off of this outlet. So really this you need to be safe. So that means that you should hire an electrician if you're not comfortable with this. But that being said, wiring is not difficult. I got this book a long, long time ago all about basic wiring. It's not difficult. You just need a couple items to keep you nice and safe. Make sure that anytime you're doing any wiring that you're turning off the power at the main electrical box in your house. You can even turn off all the main power in your house just to be double sure. Lamps Plus has really outdone themselves with this light fixture. This is a track light and track light is really for focused light. So you can see this is actually going to focus directly on this wall on the liquor bottles and the great thing about it, it's really nice and lightweight. I can move this around and actually refocus light if I have a party and I'd like to actually light up the area where my guests are going to be or I could focus it on a buffet nice and low or up high toward the bottles. So it really is versatile and speaking of versatile, I also also think that the styling of this track light, it can go into any different decor. I think it's beautiful. I think it's really neat and it's really nice and close to the ceiling so it doesn't take up a lot of visual space either. Now Crown Granite supplied me with some absolutely gorgeous new cabinetry here. They're ready to assemble cabinets. I've assembled two of them already and I'm going to take you through the entire process because I have two more to assemble today. But I'd like to show you the features of these cabinets. They're absolutely beautiful. Soft closed doors, soft closed closed drawers and they have plywood sides and shelves so they're solid wood all the way around top quality and they're pretty easy to assemble so let's get going with that. I'm starting off today assembling one of the angle cabinets. Now I have two of these and they're getting placed on either side of the entire base unit and I have the bottom piece here but I also have all the other pieces spread out around me including all of my hardware. So some of the hardware is already installed by the factory which is really helpful. Now here here I'm dealing with the underside of the bottom of the cabinet and you can see I have one of these angle brackets installed into this little bracket here. This actually is going to slide in. There are a couple little dimples here that get placed into these little squares. You need a hammer to get these set correctly so just go ahead and pound those in place. Just like that until you hear a click. Every single one of these that you see pre-installed by the factory needs to be set in place before you can place any of these pieces together. So here's the interior side panel of the cabinet itself. You can see there's the toe kick there. I have some pre-drilled areas here and I also have pre-drilled holes for shelving. So I'm going to take the bottom of the base and I'm going to slide it into this channel here. And you notice today I am not using glue when I'm assembling these cabinets. Now the reason why is because with these brackets they're so strong you don't need additional glue. So I'm just going to line up the holes here and get this all assembled. Now we're looking at the interior back corner here and we're going to do this the exact same way. So five screws on each one of these brackets. And there's a second type of bracket right here that's going to slide in. This one is a steeper angle than a 90 degree. So you're just going to put these in on either sides. So now I have two door frames. So the door frames actually hold the doors. And so what they have on the back here are grooves. So a groove along the long length and a groove along the bottom. So I'm going to line this up and I'm going to get them completely aligned with the brackets. So they're going to slide directly into that nice groove align here and then I'm going to pre-drill through the door frame. So I have my drill outfitted with a 5 64th drill bit and you see I have a piece of tape wrapped around it. That's because I'm putting in a tiny screw like this but I don't want the screw to go through the front of the door. So what I'm doing here is I'm stopping it with a piece of tape so I know exactly where to stop my drill bit and I'll go ahead and drill a couple little holes.
I'm going to clamp these together in the right spot to give me a hand. If you have somebody that can help you, go ahead and grab them at this point and we can install three of these on the back side just like that. I'm also pre-drilling these with a 5 64ths drill bit. Now I have a 90 degree bracket that's going to go in this back corner just like this and I'll install large screws into all four of the holes. Now for the toe kicks. So you notice you have a little cutout on either side of one of these. So you're going to line one up on one side over the top that accommodates that bracket flip it over, accommodates it on the other side, and then these two angles line up in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these brackets that are left over, we're going to mark for them on the back side and get everything nice and secure. So two soft close hinges come with the doors. They pop right into these openings. I have a couple little bumpers here that I'm going to put right into the corners. They pop right in place just like that. And then I'll take some short screws here and just go ahead and attach these. Now I'm getting ready to attach the door to the face frame. So I'm taking this part of the hinge. It's got one hole in it. I'm just going to pre-drill a hole here and get everything nice and secured. But at the same time, you see I'm propping it up on a box. So this is really helpful if you're working alone. And I'm going to go ahead and measure from the top down to make sure that I get the same door height across the entire base unit. Perfect. Now I'm getting ready to build a drawer base. It has three drawers and honestly I think this is easier to do than building the angled cabinet. So this is really straightforward. Everything is at a 45 degree angle. I've got my packet of hardware here and we're just going to start off the exact same way. We're going to locate all of our right angle brackets and put them into the pre-installed hardware that the factory sent. So the back of the cabinet is really interesting. This has pre-drilled holes, three of them on each side that are going to accommodate the soft closed drawer pulls. So this is also the back side which has a little indentation all the way around. So this outer edge gets inserted into the sides and the bottom. It's going to keep it really extra secure so that you don't have to use glue on this one either. Now it's time to install the faceplate and you can see on the back side here I have three grooves. The grooves are going to fit into all three of these surfaces. So let's get everything lined up and then we can go ahead and screw in from the back side with the brackets. Now it's time to take the large brackets and reinforce all four corners along the top. So this is what it takes to make a drawer. You have a base, you have three sides, a front, a little bit of glue and a rubber mallet. I love making drawers. These all have a little dado here that's going to accommodate this base piece. And you can see quality in this piece. It's nice quarter inch thick. It's going to fit inside this groove. So let's go ahead and start gluing some of these pieces and getting them together. That's all there is to building a drawer. So in order to prevent the drawer from falling out every time you open it, there are locks here. So they get installed in the right and left corner and there is a right and a left. And the way that this works, it's got a little lever here. So anytime you need to take the drawer out, you're going to press this in in order to release it. They get installed with little screws. Now I'm getting ready to install a drawer glide aligner. So this is a neat piece that slides left to right and actually aligns as the drawer is open and closed to make sure that everything is going to stay in proper alignment. And you have two little discs here that go into the holes in the back of the cabinet itself. Just like that. And each one of these gets secured to the back with two screws. So now I'll take a left drawer glide and I'm going to slide it on this little tip. There's a little area in the back. You can just slide it right in. 
push it over a little bit and then I can align it just inside the front face here. And I'm just going to put a couple of screws through that just to hold it in place nicely. So both glides get pulled out all the way and there are two little hooks on the back of the glides. There are two holes on the back of each drawer they get lined up with. So they're right here on the back right and left. So I'm just going to place this on the track, get it to align, then I can press the glides into those holes and then push the drawer in until it clicks. Now I can pull it out and now we have soft closed drawers. The cabinets are all installed. I have three inch screws going through the backs of all of the cabinets. I've leveled them, making sure that they're not only level in this plane, but front to back as well. Now, if you need to make any slight adjustments, you're going to use these cedar shims and you can put them in between the cabinets, you can put them underneath the cabinets, or you can put them between the cabinet and the back wall. That's how you're going to get this nice and level and plumb and it really needs to be, so make sure you take a little extra time to get that just right. They're also screwed together one to the other so all four of these become one single unit. And you notice we've cut away the carpet underneath. This is laying directly on the cement floor and then we've taken the carpet and put it back into place. We've actually moved the carpet tacks in front, glued them down so everything's nice and secure. I've also taken a piece of this eighth inch MDF and I've cut it to every angle to make sure that everything corresponds and this goes underneath the entire piece of cabinetry so it looks like one single unit. In order to cut all those angles you're going to use a tool like this. You can line it up all along the edge here and then you can take this angle directly over to your miter saw and cut it at whatever angle you need according to whatever cabinetry you're installing. I'm ready to go ahead and start installing the shelving so let's get cutting. Now I'm using four inch screws that are going directly into the stud behind it. And these have also been pre-drilled and I have three inch screws going into the other two by four. And I wanna show you just how strong this is already. So I have this all set up. Look at this, not even moving. The width of the shelf can be anything as long as it's cut short on the one side that has the outlet on it. Now that the construction is done, we're going to start on the decorative part of the shelving. So what I have here is just basic one by material. I have a one by eight by eight, a one by four by eight, and a one by 12 by eight that's going to get sandwiched on the bottom. And you'll notice there's a little trough in between the two pieces on the top here. And what this is going to accommodate is a piece of this screen mold. Now the screen mold is usually three quarters of an inch wide, but I've cut it down to a half inch because this is where our LED lighting strip is going to hide. You'll never see it. It's going to hide in this little trough right here, but it does need to be trimmed down to half inch wide. So I've done that with a utility knife all along the length. So here's my setup for attachment. I have a mini compressor and a brad nailer outfitted with two inch nails. And just note on the side that has the electricity, I'm cutting the screen mold a half inch shorter to accommodate the LED light strip. to install the LED light strip that I got from Lamps Plus. So I have it right here in my hand. It's really thin. It's self-adhesive on one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay it right down in this valley, press it in place, and it won't move. From that point, because we've built this little cubby here, it needs to accommodate some things that we need to attach onto here. So we have this adapter. The adapter is going to go and lay inside this cubby. It's also going to be plugged into the outlet that we installed in the wall. And then everything gets connected to this LED controller. So this needs to be visible. And the way that I'm going to keep this visible is through this side panel. So I've pre-drilled holes to accommodate some really small head Phillips head screws. This is going to be removable if need be. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this LED controller. I've pre-drilled half inch holes here so that I can put these wires through the holes and then I can actually put two-way tape on this LED controller and tape it in place. So it's going to be really seamless looking and once everything is painted and caulked, you won't even be able to tell that it's there.
first coat of paint is on the shelving and while that's drying I'll be concentrating on making the countertop for this area. If you'd like to know how to get the perfect finish on your shelving, check out my how to paint cabinets video on ReneeRomeo.com. What I'm doing now is I'm going to be making a countertop out of birch plywood. Now birch plywood is perfect for this situation. It's going to be really easy. It's going to be a simple install too. It's a great DIY project and you know what? It's going to be durable as well. The way I'm going to get the perfect shape out of this is by using craft paper. So you know I have these kind of odd angles on both ends. What I'm doing is I'm taking the craft paper, I'm actually taping it to the wall nice and straight along that back edge and then I'm just simply taking the craft paper nice and taut and I'm just running my hand around it just to make sure that I get a nice crease. Once I get that crease all the way around I'll take a pair of scissors and I'll cut it out. That becomes my template for the birch plywood. I'm cutting two layers of plywood to make a one and a half inch thick countertop. I'm cutting the base plywood a little smaller than the finished birch and then I glue and screw the two pieces together to make one joined piece. What I'm using for the front here is just one by material. This is poplar. So the top of this is birch, this is poplar. When I stain them, they're going to stain pretty much similarly. But what I need to do is start measuring for angles and making sure that I get this applied to the very front at the correct angle. The countertop isn't attached yet, so I brought it back in the workshop so I could finish it right in here. I'm getting ready to put the final finish on the countertop and you can see I'm completely outfitted. I have everything covered with plastic, uh, including my shoes. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a resin coating. Now resin coating is going to be really super thick. It's going to be very, very durable and it's going to give this a crystal clear finish. And if you're interested in installing cabinet hardware like I did, I've located it in the dead center of each drawer. So that means dead center top to bottom and side to side. Now it's time for the big reveal. The shelves are loaded with liquor bottles. I have so much storage in the cabinets below. Just look at this new storage solution. This is really a great way to store liquor bottles. They're nice and easy to identify. With the bright new lighting, I have everything highlighted exactly the way it should be. And let me turn the lights off and show you what it looks like with mood lighting. Well, I'm so happy with the way that this turned out. I've probably quadrupled my storage capacity by adding the cabinets and the shelving in this area where I used to have minimal storage. I've also increased my area for adding a buffet area, and I've also added drawers here so I can keep plates and napkins hidden away. I also have two large areas on either side where I could store extra liquor bottles if necessary. But most of all, I've given you a lot of great basement bar ideas that you can implement in your basement space as well. Lamps Plus helped me create this beautiful, bright, highlighted wall, which is exactly what I was going for. And Crown Granite supplied the cabinetry that lightened and brightened this space in a really gorgeous way. And I hope you check both of them out for yourself because they supply you with the style, quality, and price point that you're looking for. And please join me for part two of this video series where I'll be moving over to the other area of the bar and sharing more great ideas with you for that space. This is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. Thank you so much for watching and please like, share, subscribe, and follow. I would so appreciate it.